Hi guys, uh, I'm here with my first review. Uh, I'm going to be doing some reviews on model aircraft, specifically diecast model aircrafts because I've been collecting them for a very long time. And uh, for last uh, couple of years or three years, I've been collecting them in one 200 scale. And you know what? Uh, the improvement and uh, the added detail is unbelievable i mean uh, the manufacturers are really striving hard to make uh, a realistic replica of a full scale in one 200 scale models and uh, the amount of detail and accuracy that they are implementing is just unbelievable uh, i'll share uh, with you the very brand new model of, from Aero Classic, which is a Super Connie from, uh, for Pakistan International Airlines. Uh, then I have a Breitling Super Connie right down here, which is about 17 years old, uh, 15 to 17 years old. And then on the, on the <coughs> right side, I have a Corgi's uh, Super Connie, which is in 1144 scale, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's a nice model and uh, you can see you I will talk about all the uh, the details uh, the accuracy and uh, which manufacturer produced uh, which model uh, how accurate it is because we are talking generation different uh, difference here uh, so hang in tight and we'll just start off So I'm back guys, uh, first I'm gonna start talking about the Corgi model here, which which I'm just gonna pick pick it up now. Uh, this one right here is a, uh, for, uh, offered by Corgi. Uh, this model was offered about uh, 10 to 15 years ago or so. S at the same time how when the Breitling uh, Super Connie model was uh, available, uh, came into the market, uh, this one is a very nice model. I mean, uh, if you look at the profile, it uh, kind of looks like a profile of a Super Connie, but it really isn't because the way the Super Connie's fuselage uh, goes is that there's a constant section right, right here between the wings, in front of the wings, and it goes to the back of the wing. But if you look at this curve here, there's a constant curve on the top of the fuse and that's wrong constellations had a constant straight section which a lot of people don't know they all think the profile of the connie is curved right through but it's not and then if i look at the nose here uh, the nose the radom right here looks very baldish um, it's not accurate it's it's supposed to be pointed so that's one error um, then the second one is the cockpit windows which are very quite small and they should be a little bit bigger uh, engines are nice then the cells are nice uh, you can see some detail there you can see top and bottom uh, exhaust stacks coming out you can also see the intake scoops for the carburetors uh, these these are not that bad, but uh, they, they could have been better. The bottom scoops are there, as you can see, and these are nice. Um, going back, if you look at the fuselage here, it's very thick. It, it should be much more thinner and more of a cone. The bottom is coming up fine, but the top should be going down more and then coming up just before the the vertical fin because the... Connie's fuselage comes down and kind of skews, skews up and on the top is the horizontal stabilizer. So that's that's one error on the Corgi model. Uh, the other error that I noticed if I turn this model around and I'm looking head on right like this, um, the dihedral of the wings, it's not enough. Uh, from what I remember, uh, when I built my giant scale uh, radio control Connie, uh, it was about seven and a half uh, degrees or so, 
and this looks a lot flatter and this more looks like maybe four degrees or so something like that maybe five so the dihedral is not there plus look at the nose landing gear uh, don't the nose landing gear is uh, is kind of big it's baldish um, it should be very you know thin and should be more detailed but it's really not so i mean for a 15 year old model uh, which uh, looks like a connie you know i'll give about maybe six out of ten on this five out of ten uh, but the, the the great part about it is that delivery i mean it's in a trans canada airlines livery as a uh, model of a CFTGC, which is a third Connie that TC had. By the way, I, I believe it was in '62 when Trans Canada became Air Canada. So this is the predecessor of Air Canada, and Trans Canada had uh, I think 14 Super Connies, uh, starting from the early C models and then going all the way into H models. And some of the C models were upgraded to E models, then G models. And this one here is a G model because you can see the wingtip tanks. Uh, H didn't have wingtip tanks. It was the G that had. And the G was the most di distinctive Super Connie as an airliner because the military used them uh, as an AVAX and uh, for different uh, purposes. It was so good that it was used in many different variants. Uh, military used it in different variants. Uh, U.S. Navy used it in different variants. Air Force used it in different variants. So, I mean, it's a beautiful aircraft, very well designed, very, very nice airplane. And Super Connies are actually the iconic airliners of 50s and 40s and 60s. So the earlier versions were the short versions, which was uh, four, uh, zero, four nines, uh, up till seven four nines. And then after seven four nines, they made the 1049, which is this one here, which turned into a super Connie with a stretch fuselage and uh, taller uh, vertical fins in the back here. So the, I believe, I mean, the, the super Connies were the only aircraft with three vertical fins as you are seeing here there's i don't there's one other british aircraft that came with the three tails but it didn't last that long but the super connies last and the connies last for a long time about 20 years and super connies were about 10 to 12 years depending on the airline because uh, within this time frame uh, after the last version which was l1649 the starliner uh, the Jet Age came, the 707s came, the DC-8 came, and then Super Connies were retired by most of the airlines. And they, they went into a second tier uh, airlines before, you know, uh, like uh, no frill airlines and cargo airlines. And from there, they developed down and ended. By the way, uh, the Breitling Super Connie is the uh, one of a uh, handful Connies left. And up to four years or five years ago, this was the uh, one of the two flying Super Connies left in the world. Uh, now the hardest Super Connie in Australia is the one that's uh, airworthy. It's being flown, but this one had some problem with its main landing gear. Now I'm talking about the full scale. And there was an issue with the wing spar and that wasn't rectified. And uh, Breitling ended up sponsoring uh, for the Super Connie and the association that owned it couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't get the funds for it to repair it and it ended up going to a new owners in Germany and the airplane is, is in two sections. The fuselage is separate from the wings and it's in storage right now but there's a talk going on that, you know, uh, in next few couple of years hopefully Breitling Super Connie will fly again. So i'm talking about uh, the livery here uh, the the crest this one right here sword of arms it's not even on the super connie the full scale one that's at the museum of flight uh, if you some of you guys from toronto would remember about 10 years ago there was a super connie here in uh, toronto which was uh, cftge 405 and when it went to Museum of Flight in uh, Seattle, 
before it went there it went to uh, the Air, uh, Air Force Base Griffiths Air Force Base in Syracuse New York and uh, the whole aircraft was restored there and they did an immaculate immaculate job like uh, you know ha hands up to them and uh, you know like uh, uh, sorry thumbs up to them and uh, I mean they did a beautiful beautiful job on uh, restoring that aircraft so th this th so I'm gonna uh, go to the other one which is a Breitling Super Connie so now you can see how one is different from the other and you can e clearly see the constant fuselage section on this one right here just after the wings and before the wings so the fuselage profile is very accurate on this one here uh, the front goes down and then the the nose uh, is m much more pointier than the one on the Corgi. Mind you, this is a 200 scale. It's smaller than that, but more detailed, more accurate. The engines and the cells are pretty good for its size. Uh, it could have been better. Uh, the Breitling Super Connie's uh, livery is bang on. Uh, the the tri tail do you see and the logo is perfect the the shape the profile of the shape of the fin is very accurate the landing gears are good but the only part that which is not right is the nose landing gear uh, the reason why I say that when the model is sitting uh, if I'm gonna show it to you I'll bring this down. So you see how the model is it's uh, sitting with kind of a nose down attitude attitude and that's not the way the super connie is used used to be super connie had, had uh, angle of attack on the nose and they used to sit slightly a bit nose high like that uh, you can see a little bit of that on the the corgi model but once uh, i bring the aero classics that's the best of all these three and like I said, this is about 15 year old model and it's a very nice model for its time. But now, you know, the better, better model is already here in the market. And uh, that is the Aero Classics 1200 scale Super Connie. Uh, it, you know, you can get in different airlines. I prefer PIA because I have a history with PIA. Um, I have a family history going back into the 50s with PIA and that's how I got to know about you know Super Connie aircraft so here it is guys the, this is the last uh, and I kept it uh, the best and uh, it is a beautiful beautiful model just look look at the detail on the on the landing gear you know look at that it's very accurate you know I'm gonna try to zoom this in to see if I can get zoom for you guys here Maybe I have to push it back. Yeah. So you can see the accuracy, the gear door, the gear itself. Uh, and even while holding it, you can see the gear is longer than the one that was on the Brightling Super Connie. So the aircraft sits a little, little bit on the angle of attack. And the reason why it is like that is because of the, the diameter of the, the propellers. I mean, these were big propellers one of the biggest ones around and these were the um, uh, what do you call it? the Curtis Wright uh, propellers so I mean like uh, for the cl ground clearance they raised the nose uh, up from the bottom but from the top they brought it down then they had the content constant section of the fuselage going back into a very narrow uh, fuselage like a cone and then you can see it it's skewing up or, you know skewing up a bit so the horizontal stabilizer actually sitting on the top of the the fuselage versus you know blending with the fuselage so that just right there is very very accurate um, the logo the PIA logo the stars are very accurate uh, the Pakistani Udu written Pakistan International is very nice I mean, it could be better, but uh, what I think is Aero Classic, what they did, because they also did a 400 scale model quite a few years ago, and they basically used the same artwork and, and blowed it up and put it on their 200 scale, which is this one here. 
This is an H model because you can see the the gear, the front cargo door, uh, which is a bigger one, uh, and there's a smaller one in between. And this, for the smaller one, there was a uh, galley there, and it was used to load and unload the catering. But with the cargo door, you can use, you know, for the cargo. And same for the back. Uh, right here, you can see the cargo door. A big cargo door and this was only on H models and the small passenger loading and uh, unloading door um, for into the aircraft so a very nice model um, let me show you the dihedral uh, the dihedral on this is is uh, quite well it's uh, I mean it's seven degrees or so it's much more than the the corgi ones for sure the nose is very accurate. The profile of the nose is very, very accurate. And the best part is it has the HF antenna. A lot of models don't do, but the Connie's distinctiveness was in that antenna. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's it's a beautiful model. And you know, the, the profile from the top is accurate uh, for both wings and uh, and. Uh, the fuselage and the horizontal stabilizer is very accurate. Um, the dahi the from the back, uh, the hydral is bare, you know is dead on. Uh, fins are perfectly aligned. Like it, this is a beautiful model, you know. And uh, but the the other downside uh, is that is uh, the, the script right here. Uh, it's supposed to be in Bengali. Uh, saying Pakistan International because PIA used to fly these in eastern Pakistan before the 71 war and the Pakistan divided into two but east and west and uh, before it was east and west but it was still Pakistan but afterwards the east become Bangladesh so this was in Bengali script and this on, on the model it's nothing close to Bengali script I've talked to a few people and I've showed them and they said they don't even understand you know, what it, it is. So it seems like, you know, the Aero Classic made these scribbles something look alike for the 400 scale. But when they made the 200 scale, which is twice the size, and uh, they never, you know, they never fixed that error. The flags is nice uh, in the middle of the few on the middle tail there. Very nice flag uh, of Pakistan. I'm having a bit of a time with the zoom, but you, you guys can see it. So yeah, overall, very, very nice, very accurate model. Really love it. And uh, this particular one is going to Pakistan because it's a friend of mine who ordered it through me. So I, uh, I said, okay, I'll get it for you. So I'm just waiting for somebody to take it to Pakistan with them. And uh, so the owners can have them. Uh, the, I picked up two uh, Connie's and an Airbus A300, and uh, you will you will see the A300's review afterwards. But so the box for for the Aero Classics is there, the red one with the PIA logo on it and uh, the decal, uh, and the one on the right is the Brightling one, and I've tried to keep that as good as I could. I mean, for a 15 year old model. The box condition is pretty pretty good and you know I try to keep the box uh, says of these models you know uh, with the models because half the value of these models are in the boxes and if you don't have a box or you lose a box you lose the value because the buyer will not give you 100% uh, what he you know what he would give you for the uh, model with the box but without the box you know you'll get 50% or so for you know uh, for the model and when these models are being transported they have to go into the box because it's just not the cardboard box there's a plastic cradle in there and that cradle is built and designed in a way to properly distribute and hold the model very firmly and nicely inside the box so when the box jerks and all that the model will not get damaged and uh, I've ordered many models online and maybe one was damaged the rest of them weren't so those cradles are really meant for to transport these models you know accurately 
all right guys uh, this was the super connie's own uh, review and i hope you guys like it and uh, uh, give me your feedback what you think of it uh, put in, you know you can uh, put your comments in the comment section let me know what you think about it uh, this is my first review i'm going to be doing more so i hope you guys like it and uh, you know your feedback will uh, enhance uh, and i will enhance according to your feedback and one thing i'm going to ask you is guys please subscribe to my channel uh, by clicking the liking icon so you guys can get all the updates that i will be doing and uh, spread the word around let the people know and uh, you know so so more the better for you guys and for for me as well all right you guys take care bye bye